welcome you back to our program. Good to have you folks with us today. You know, one of the things that's really important for all of us for good health is getting a good night's sleep. And while they say we might need a little less sleep as we get older, we still all need to get the right amount of sleep. And if our sleep's interrupted, sometimes that can lead to other problems. Joining us today, Dr. Ann Abdullah from the local area. Dr. Abdullah, welcome to the show. Good to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. Your area of, of specialty in, in dentistry is an unusual one. It's, um, you know, we think about, you know, cavities and fillings and teeth whitening and all that dental type of stuff. But you're specializing in something that's rather an interesting adjunct to that. It's dealing with something called sleep apnea. Some people may know what it is. Um, maybe you can define it for us. Well, what sleep apnea is, is when we're in our deepest sleep, uh, we stop breathing for at least 10 seconds at a time. And when we stop breathing, uh, the oxygen levels in our blood go down. So what our body needs are three things, air, water, and food. And what we're not getting is the air. So what happens is further down the road, we end up with some kind of uh, medical problem, such as heart disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, dementia, even impotence. So it's a life-threatening medical condition that needs to be treated. How do, um, how do they find out if someone actually has it, other than getting a checkup from the doctor? But the doctor would have to ask the right questions, I would think, to know if somebody really has this. That's a good question you're asking. Actually, um, a lot of the physicians aren't going to tell you, hey, you got sleep apnea, unless you complain that, hey, you know what, I'm really not sleeping very well at night. I, I don't have the energy that I used to have when I was a little bit younger. Um, most doctors don't uh, make the effort to screen all the patients for sleep ap apnea. So what we're doing as dentists is we're screening all our patients. And so what we do is we ask them a set of um, standardized questions, and that's going to give us a clue as to whether or not they have a problem or not. Mm -hmm. If they do, we send them out to do a sleep study. And what they do is they stay the night in the sleep lab, and um, they're hooked up to monitor their oxygen levels and see whether or not they stop breathing. And if they do stop breathing, how many times an hour they stop breathing. And um, based on that, the sleep doctor will make the diagnosis of whether or not they have sleep apnea or just maybe restless leg syndrome. Mm -hmm. and okay, then, so a person's diagnosed by the doctor uh -huh. and then they say, okay, so how do I fix it? Well, the, the best method of treatment for sleep apnea is the CPAP machine. And what CPAP stands for is continuous positive airway pressure. And what this machine does is it forces air down the airway, so it forces it open throughout the night. So that's the best method of treatment. If you can tolerate it, that's great. The problem with that is only about 30% of the population can tolerate it, and the rest basically take it and then they throw it away in their closet. Or they might use it for one or two hours and just say, you know what, I'm not gonna, I want to just sleep. I'm going to take this off and, and sleep. Um, so the FDA came up with um, uh, new dental devices to treat mild, moderate, and severe sleep apnea um, for patients who can't tolerate the CPAP machine. And um, the reason why you would probably ask, why is a dentist treating a medical condition? Yes, because <laughs> you'd think there'd be a, your, your doctor or one of these sleep doctors would be the one that would prescribe what you needed. Exactly. Um, so the reason why the dentists are treating sleep apnea is that it's all about the tongue. So what happens is as we get older, our muscles become more flaccid and the tongue is a muscle. So what happens in our deepest sleep is our tongue relaxes and it rolls back into the back of the throat and that creates the obstruction. Hmm. So with the dental devices, we target the source of the obstruction, which is the tongue. The device either depresses the tongue down, opening up the airway, or it moves the lower jaw forward bringing the tongue along forward with it, and that opens up the airway. So this would be a device that a person would have fitted by you. Yes. They would insert it in their mouth and go to sleep. Is that it's, how it works? It's just as simple as that. It's very comfortable. It's comfortable as wearing a retainer at night. Uh, there's nothing extra that you need to do. It travels very well. There's no hassle. There's no um, air blowing down uh, your, your throat, which is very unnatural. So it's something very easy to use, and um, 
It is covered by most PPO insurances, and it's also covered by Medicare. All right. Well, that sounds like an interesting uh, alternative. If somebody has been diagnosed with sleep apnea, they've tried the CPAP machine and mm -hmm. it doesn't work for them for whatever reason, um, or they just don't want to have that to deal with it, uh, mm -hmm. they might want to talk to you about that. Um, is it a one-time deal? If, if they fit it once, would they use it forever? Or does it change? Do you have to refit it every few years? Uh, well, the good thing is that these appliances last a very, very long time. And uh, most PPO insurances will cover a, a brand new appliance about every two years mm -hmm. or so. Um, the other thing is uh, that you do need to come in and have it adjusted maybe a couple of times, and then you're done. You basically, you, you have it for life. Sounds like that might be an interesting alternative to the machinery, and if you want to find out more, you can talk with Dr. Abdullah. Where's your office uh, located? Um, we're actually located right across from Gate 4, and bus number 2 uh, comes to our complex every, every hour. Okay. Uh, we do offer free consultations, and actually part of the consultation is I use a, what they call a pharyngometer. The pharyngometer is a a piece of equipment developed by Harvard University, and that measures the amount of air you're getting in your airway. So in that way, I'm able to screen patients to see whether or not they indeed have an ob obstruction before they even go and get the sleep study done. All right, sounds very, very interesting indeed. Now, is this the, do you do this only, or do you also do regular dentistry as well? I also do regular okay. dentistry, crown and bridge. Okay. The whole deal. The whole deal. So if someone needs their teeth cleaned or x-rays or all that, yes. you can handle that as well. If they don't have sleep apnea or even if they do, uh, you can be their dentist as well. Exactly. That, that's good. Thank you so much for coming by and talking with us. I think Thank it sounds you. like an interesting alternative. And again, if you've been diagnosed with that or, or somebody tells you that you stop breathing, maybe somebody you sleep with tells you that you stop breathing, um, check it out and uh, you can find out more by contacting Dr. Abdullah's office. We'll be coming right back with more right after this. Are you sleeping alone again because of your snoring? Is your CPAP sitting in the closet because you can't use it? These are some of the problems associated with your tongue blocking airflow to your body. Your body becomes oxygen starved and your health deteriorates. We have FDA approved solutions for both of these problems and they are covered by most PPO insurance and Medicare. We are conveniently located across from gate four. Call us for a free consultation. 